Hi, so I'm building my own furniture for my apartment. So you knew this was coming. I'm building my own sofa slash couch, but I had some conditions. First, I wanted to save me some money. Second, I wanted to have no sewing involved. And third, I wanted a two meter wide sofa so I could use it as a guest bed to sleep on, but also be really big so I can hide a lot of stuff behind it. And so I started planning, making sketches, and looking for influences. For example, Michelle Choi's sofa that can be seen in her vlogs, or sofas that I found on Pinterest, or sofas that are sold on the internet for a lot of money. <laughs> And after some brainstorming, I eventually settled on something along the lines of these sofas. And I'll show you how to recreate the sofa for less than $300. I started with some very generic cheap wood that just needed to be somewhat strong and stable enough. This wood will not be visible when the sofa is finished, and it was just supposed to act as a structural element to form the corpus and hold everything together. After cutting all of my wood into the right lengths, I stacked them together and kind of visualized how they're gonna look later if I were to screw them on. And then I was content and so I did just that. I pre-drilled the holes and then screwed on slightly thicker screws to have a very basic corpus. Of course, for all the exact measurements, I'll leave you a link in the description box below the like button. I subsequently added some cheap wood that I had lying around to act as, you know, some horizontal bars so that you wouldn't just fall through when you use the sofa while sitting on it. The gaps afterwards were still way too big, but I'll fix that in a second. After attaching some angle connectors to add some major stability into the system, I was like, can you save extra money by just replacing the extra wood needed with some ropes? And as I later found out, yes, you could do that. That kind of furniture actually exists. For example, the so-called rope bed having originated centuries ago. So it stood the test of time. Fun fact, after sleeping on the rope bed, sometimes the ropes would come loose and then it would get kind of uncomfortable. And so to have it be comfortable again, people needed to re-tighten the ropes, which is why people started saying sleep tight. Allegedly. So I thought, why not just do that? And for the vertical back support, I thought it worked just fine. But horizontally, you could still feel the gaps because the support just wasn't tight enough. So I knew that I needed to change that. And coincidentally, I later discovered a freestanding slatted bed frame on the open street. So I just snatched them out and screwed them onto my sofa frame at a very later stage. That really solved the problem. Everything was comfortable then. The solution to this problem was completely free, but if you aren't lucky like me, you can just get one for around $20. Following that, I worked on the visible type of wood that would later make up the armrests. I decided for some pressure-treated Douglas fir wood and found that there were different ways to join them together. I chose a so-called miter joint, which I felt I could recreate easily without buying extra equipment. So I sawed the wood pieces by hand at a 45 degree angle, and please be precise while doing this, and then later joined them together with some good old wood glue. I cleaned up the residual glue and then smoothed out the exposed corner edges with the help of a screwdriver. It is recommended to add in some screws somewhere for some added stability, but I didn't do that because I was just lazy and I was like, maybe I'm just going to try it out and see if it works out fine. And for now, for the first few weeks that I've done this, there's no wiggling or things coming undone. Anyways, then the question was, which finish did I want to have? Generally for wood, there are many options to choose from, like paint, oils, varnishes, epoxies, polyurethane, sprays, and just much, much, much more. So for my Douglas fir wood, I knew that I wanted to kind of intensify the colors that were there already, but keep it matte at the same time. I realized that I had something lying around already, which is from Ikea, their oil-based finish, and it was safe to use inside, which was important to me. So I just used that, applied it, and then let it dry. So then I continued by working on these sofa pads. I actually just started off with a old Ikea mattress because I had it and I it was just the one that I slept on for before I had my Murphy bed 
and it was actually very cheap. I got it for less than $20 because it was a clearance item, but you can get a similar one for around $70, which I guess is also a good price. I then cut it into the right shapes and measurements, and then proceeded to fix up the open edges with some white IKEA fabric and some strong blue, although you could just use the yellow foam inside without the fabric at all. I don't know why I did that. Huh? No, wait. Or no, no, I don't know why I didn't. Then I leveled out everything with some felt gliders. I also created a little structure to cover the front opening of the sofa and added some pillows and basically arranged everything in the way that it would kind of look like later. This is how the sofa is going to look. But there's one thing that's missing. And that's, of course, the sofa covers. So I scoured the internet for some affordable sofa fabrics that weren't too thin, but also cheap enough. And then I settled eventually on a white fabric that cost me five euros per square meter because it was on sale. And that equated to 35 euros in total. I first cut the fabrics into roughly the shape of the sofa pads, but a bit bigger than that. And since I didn't want to use a sewing technique that I did know nothing about, I used Velcro. So I tightly folded the sheet to create a clean line at the fold. Then I took a piece of the carte bode Velcro by IKEA and glued both pieces into the corresponding places on the sheet. It takes some folding and some wiggling, but the good thing is that you can always add more Velcro if you feel like the pieces don't align or they don't stretch tight enough. And then, you know, you'll eventually get the hang of it. I later did just that because it was kind of peeking out. I added some more Velcro and then the problem was solved. So now that I had the sofa covers covered with a nice, beautiful fabric, I could put everything in place and then finally put all my unesthetically looking stuff somewhere here and just hide it for a long time. But I wasn't done because regarding the front opening, I think I'm gonna have to rethink the design because I don't think it's aesthetic. Yeah, so I didn't like the look of the front opening cover thing, so I just dismissed that and bought a new wooden beam, made it go through the same oil finish procedure as with the armrests. I screwed that on, and then I took some of the residual fabric, cut that into rectangles, and attached them below the beam as a new cover. I then added more pillows because I just felt like two were just not enough. And then I was finally finished. So I have to say this was surprisingly easy, I guess, at least in contrast to the Murphy bed, which was way more complex. And even though I still feel a little bit unsure about the latest aesthetic changes, I'm just very satisfied to have done this myself with what I did and feel very comfortable in my sofa. So there might be some open questions still. For example, the fact that this area has a 90 degree angle to this area. Isn't it uncomfortable? I have to say it's not really uncomfortable. It was basically an aesthetic stylistic choice and because I have pillows, it still is comfortable to me, and I like it that way. And another thing that people might be asking is, since I didn't sew everything together with a sewing machine and just used some Velcro, aren't things coming undone in the fabric sometimes? Is it a lot of maintenance? And I have to say, sometimes you do have to put things back in place, but it's not like more than with a conventional sofa. It's basically the same experience for me. It's it's like a normal sofa to me. That's basically what my message is. And I am excited to see what other things I'm going to do with my apartment or with this YouTube channel. And I hope that you stick around for that journey as you did with this video. And yeah, that's basically it from my side. So thanks for watching and thanks for the memories.